Alhamdulillah <laughs> ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد فضل سسز الاسلام one of the greatest and most extraordinary commodities that we have as Muslims is our unwavering belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The concept of Tawheed, of monotheism, was designed to establish a solid and resolute allegiance or bond between the human being and his creator in every facet of his life. Appealing to his fitrah, his intrinsic nature to believe and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone while protecting his heart from being manipulated by demonic entities that try arduously to usurp his soul through promises of safety and security to ultimately gain his allegiance. And when we consider these things in retrospect to the strategic and ideological war that is being waged against people in the name of capitalism, socialism, narcissism, and all of the other isms, that tend to draw a wedge between a human being and his creator, we come to the realization that true and real power lies in our allegiance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The plan is to create so much fear in you with the tangible things that they control that you not only begin to doubt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ability to provide for you and facilitate your affairs according to the standards that society has set for you, but you begin to doubt the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala altogether. This is the type of environment that the Dajjal will emerge from amongst. There was a very intimate dialogue that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran between Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam and his people who were so consumed by fear that they begin to confuse their belief with idolatry. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانَ الرَّجِيمِ وَحَاجَّهُ قَوْمُهُ قَالَ أَتُحَاجُّونِ فِي اللَّهِ وَقَدْ هَدَانْ وَلَا أَخَافُ مَا تُشْرِكُونَ بِهِ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ رَبِّي شَيْئًا وَسِعَ رَبِّي كُلَّ شَيْءٍ عِلْمًا أَفَلَا تَتَذَكَّرُونَ وَكَيْفَ أَخَافُ مَا أَشْرَكْتُمْ وَلَا تَخَافُونَ أَنَّكُمْ أَشْرَكْتُمْ بِاللَّهِ أَنَّكُمْ أَشْرَكْتُمْ بِاللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ عَلَيْكُمْ سُلْطَانًا فَأَيُّ الْفَرِيقَيْنِ أَحَقُّ بِالْأَمْنِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِيمَانَهُمْ بِظُلْمٍ أُولَئِكَ لَهُمُ الْأَمْنُ وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَحَاجَّهُ قَوْمُ and his people began to argue and debate with him about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim retorted, How are you going to argue with me about Allah wa qad hadan? And I am upon guidance. He has guided me. There's nothing to argue about. I'm living proof that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. I'm guided. I'm upon guidance. I can see correctly. I can see clearly. 
as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in another ayah in the Quran how the person can determine that he is upon guidance. أَفَمَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا فَأَحْيَيْنَاهُ وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا يَمْشِي بِهِ فِي النَّاسِ كَمَنْ مَثَلُهُ فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ لَيْسَ بِخَارِجٍ مِنْهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Can he who is dead, to whom we gave a life and a light by which he can walk amongst men, clearly, can he be like one who is steeped in darkness from which he can never come out? How are you going to debate with me about the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when I am living proof that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists, that I am before guidance? And how should I fear those whom you have associated as a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I should not fear them except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes me or allows me to fear them. The knowledge of my Lord encompasses everything. Won't you take a reminder from this? Then Ibrahim went further and he said, And how should I be in fear of those whom you associate with partners with Allah when you don't fear that you have associated with them as a partner with Allah? How should I fear them when you don't fear that you have associated with them as a partner with Allah? Then they ask Ibrahim, Which of the two groups of people deserve true safety and security if indeed you have knowledge? Those who put their trust and their reliance in Allah or those who put their trust and their reliance in tangible things? Tangible things like life insurance policies, like welfare, like democracy, and all of these other systems that we continue to put our trust and our reliance in. Which of the two deserves safety and security if in fact you have knowledge? And Ibrahim, he responded to this with a very beautiful and profound statement. He said, <laughs> Those who believe in Allah and do not confuse their belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with idolatry, with subtle forms of shirk. Those who believe in Allah and don't confuse their belief with shirk, these people, they deserve complete safety and security and they will have true guidance. Their fear was misplaced. And the thing about fear, brothers and sisters, just like love, that when you fear a thing, just like when you love a thing to such a degree, it almost becomes a deity, it becomes a god over you. When you allow someone or something to manipulate your fear, then you begin to do things for that entity based upon your fear of it. It has literally become your God. As some of the scholars, they say, Your love of a thing could cause you to worship it, and your fear of a thing could cause you to worship it as well. Fear and love, hope, raja, khawf, hub, all of these are emotions of the heart. And if you allow people to manipulate them for their own desires and their own motives, then they literally become a god over you. And this is something that we should understand as Muslims, that there is no safety, there is no security, except in your alliance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your allegiance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullahu ta'ala, man khaf Allah, akhaf Allah min hu kulli shay, wa man khaf al-nas, akhafahu Allah min kulli shay. Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah ta'ala, one of the scholars of the Tabi'un, he said that whoever fears Allah, Allah will make everything fear you. Man khaf Allah, akhaf Allah min hu kulli shay, that whoever fears Allah, Allah will make everything fear you. Wa man khaf al-nas, and whoever fears people, akhaf Allah min hu kulli shay, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you in fear of everything. You will literally be terrified and in fear of everything because you fear people. When you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah makes everything subservient to you. You don't have fear of people. You don't have fear of losing my job. You don't have fear of money. What if I get broke? What if I don't have money? What if I don't have this? What if I fail? You don't fear those things because you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and because of that Allah makes everything fear you. And fearless people, brothers and sisters, are dangerous type of people in a society that makes slaves out of those who succumb to their timidity. And this is what makes the religion of Al-Islam such a powerful force because it has raised the shallow and superficial standards of liberty and lifted the shackles of human servitude and all of its manifestations while making the human being independent 
of any and every entity except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the independence that what is, made, is what makes a true Muslim, makes him, people are in fear of him. Not because he's going to blow something up, not because he's going to do something, you know, uh, something that, 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 that the religion of Islam did not sanction. They fear him because they can't control him. Literally, people lose their jobs because the employer wants to control you. And as a result of that, you don't mind quitting. You don't mind resigning. You don't mind because you're not in fear of anything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't let anything control you. There was a beautiful incident that happened during the time of the Khilafah of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. When Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Sa'ad ibn Malik al-Zuhri ala Iraq, ba'fa rustum ila Sa'ad, أن يبعث إليه برجل عاقل عالم فأرسل إليه ربعي بن عامر في غزوة القادسية فدخل عليه وقد زينوا المجلس في النماريخ المذهبة والزرابي وأظهر والبواقيت واللآلي الثمينة والزينة العظيمة وعليه تاجه وغير ذلك من الأمتئة الثمينة وقد دخل عليه ربعي دخل عليه ربعي بثياب سفيقة وسيف وترس وفارس قصيرة ولم يزل راكبها حتى داس بها على طرف البصاق ثم نزل وربطها ببعض تلك الوسائد فأقبل عليه بصلاحه ودرعه Yes, you are our Lord. The fear was manipulated. They will say, yes, you are our Lord. And then the Dajjal will say, oh heavens, rain down on them in abundance. And it will begin to rain on them. He will tell the earth, O earth, give them fruits and vegetables and the earth will produce fruits and vegetables. But look at how he took advantage of their fear. They saw what happened to another group of people and they didn't want that for themselves. So as a, as a result of that, their fear caused them to associate that love is a natural human emotion that entities such as Shaitan tries to manipulate for their own motives, ultimately making you dependent on them to win your allegiance through your fear of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّمَا ذَلِكُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ يُخَوِّفُ أَوْلِيَاءَهُ فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that is the shaytan who tries to instill fear in you of his associates. So don't fear them, but fear me if in fact you are believers. Our fear has to be of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters. There are many things that are going to confront us in this dunya that will try to utilize our fear against us. Will manipulate our fear to literally place themselves as God over us. And the religion about Islam makes the believer autonomous because it puts certain components in place that give you authority over your heart. Love, hope, fear, anger. These are all emotions of the heart. Just as the physical body has acts of worship it has to perform, the heart has actions of worship that it performs. Khawf, raja, hurp. All of these things are actions of the heart and they are acts of worship. They are ibadah for the heart. And if those things start to, you know, do it for other reasons other than Allah, we love for other than Allah, we fear for other than Allah, then we have literally taken those acts of worship and given them to other than Allah, which is another form of shirk. Ali ibn Abi Talib رضي الله تعالى عنه, he said, حبب حبيبك أحبب حبيبك هون ما عسى أن يكون بغيذك يوم ما وأبغض بغيذك هون ما عسى أن يكون حبيبك يوم ما. Ali ibn Abi Talib رضي الله تعالى عنه, he said, love the one that you love in moderation because the one you love may one day have to be the one you hate and hate the one that you hate in moderation because the one you hate may one day have to be the one you love. Gain control over your heart. Gain control over your emotions. Gain control over the acts of worship that the heart has to perform for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we realize this, we come to this realization, we understand that everything that we do, our love, our fear, our hope, our anger, everything is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, قُلْ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةِ وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ مَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, indeed my salat, 
my slaughter and my life, my death all belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single part of me belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La sharika la. I associate no partners in any of these things with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what Abu Bakr anhu was trying to establish when he stood amid the eerie silence of the Sahaba, when the news of the demise of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam began to spread. Umar bin al-Khattab anhu قام عمر يخطب الناس ويتوعد من قال مات رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بالقتل والقطع ويقول والله ما مات رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا يبعثه الله ولا يقطع عنا أيدي رجال وأرجلهم عمر رضي الله تعالى عنه when the news of the death of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم began to spread he began to corner people in the masjid waving his sword threatening them that the Wallahi, the next person who says the Prophet is dead, I'm going to cut his head off. He said, Wallahi, the Prophet is not dead. Allah is going to bring him back and he is going to cut off the hands and the people, the hands and the feet of the people who are lying on him. فَخَرَجَ أَبُوْ بَكَرْ رَضِي اللَّهُ تَعْنْهُ وَعُمَرْ يَتَكَلَّمَ النَّاسِ فَقَالَ إِجْلِسْ يَا عُمَرْ فَأَبَى عُمَرْ أَنْ يَجْلِسْ فَقَالَ أَبُوْ بَكَرْ رَضِي اللَّهُ تَعْنْهُ إِجْلِسْ يَا عُمَرْ فأبى عمر أن يجلس فلما تكلم أبو بكر جلس عمر فحمد الله وأثنى عليه وقال ألا من كان يعبد محمد فإن محمد قد مات ومن كان يعبد الله فإن الله حي لا يموت أبو بكر رضي الله تعالى عنه he came out while Umar was speaking to the people and he said Umar sit down Umar refused to sit down he said, Umar, sit down. Umar refused to sit down. Abu Bakr climbed the minbar and praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he deserved to be praised. And he said, oh people, whoever from amongst you used to worship Muhammad, Muhammad is dead. Muhammad is dead. But whoever from amongst you used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for indeed, uh, for indeed, for indeed Allah is hayyun, Allah is ever living, la yamut, he will never die. And he was trying to separate the people from the man. Our deen, la yurbat a deen bi ayy insan amin al nas. Hatta Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That our deen is not connected to any man from amongst mankind. Not even the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our deen is connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Abu Bakr, he recited the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلِ أَفَإِنْ مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلًا قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ وَمَنْ يَنْقَلِبْ عَلَىٰ أَقِبَيْهِ فَلَنْ يَضُرَّ اللَّهَ الشَّيْئًا وَسَيَجِزِ اللَّهُ الشَّاكِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Muhammad is nothing more than a messenger. Many messengers have come before him. If he dies or he's killed, are you going to turn back on your faith? And whoever turns back on his faith, he will not harm Allah in the least. And Allah will reward those who are grateful. He will reward those who are grateful. وَالسَّقَطَ سَيْفُ عُمَرْ مِنْ يَدِهِ وَيَقُولُ فَعَرَفْتُ أَنَّهُ قَدْ مَاتَ فخرجت أجري أبحث عن مكان أجلس فيه وحدي لأبكي وحدي. When Abu Bakr made this comment, Umar dropped the sword out of his hand. He said, "I realized at that moment that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was dead. It was no coming back. He's gone." He said, "And I left out, running as fast as I could to find a place where I could sit down by myself and cry by myself because there is no coming back." قال العلماء لا يربط الدين بأي إنسان من الناس ونحب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولكن الدين باق بعده. The scholars they say that our religion, the religion of Islam, is not connected to any individual from amongst people. We love the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, but the deen will remain even after his demise. قال العثمين رحمه الله تعالى كل من تعلق بمخلوق أو ببشر فإن هذا البشر سوف يزول. 
ولا ينفعه إلا ما بما قدر الله له من نفع أما من تعلق بالله إبادة وخوف ورجاء وطمعا وخشة فإنه المفلح فإنه المفلح شيخ وطيني رحمه الله تعالى and his commentary on this hadith he said every individual who connects himself to another human being and indeed at some point that human being is going to die and he will only benefit you with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had already decreed for you to be benefited with but whoever connects himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether as relates to his worship, his fear, his hope, his desire, his ambitions all of those things connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَإِنَّهُ الْمُفْلِحِ then he will be successful and I mention this point because today we use human beings to put people in fear our deen is not connected to any individual. We love the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but the deen is not connected to him as an individual. The deen is not connected to any individual. Not a sheikh, not a scholar, not your sheikh. I don't care who it is. Nobody. Nobody should have that much influence over you that you obey them instead of obeying Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Abdullah bin Abbas Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was on Hajj. And he instructed the Sahaba and the Tabi'un on Hajj to perform to Mektur. So some of them said, but Abu Bakr and Umar used to do it like this. Abdullah bin Abbas said, You shiku and taskut alaykum sakratun min as sama. Akuru ma qala Allah wa qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa taquru ma qala Abu Bakr wa Umar. They said, but Abu Bakr and Umar used to do it like this. He said, wait, how come woe be to you? I fear that a boulder will drop on you from the heavens. I'm telling you that Allah and his messenger said, do it like this. And you're telling me Abu Bakr and Umar said? It's not about individuals. It's not about human beings. It's about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma inna nas'aluka hubbak wa hubba man yuhibbuk wa hubba amalan yukarribuna ila hubbak Rabbana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar Allahumma a'izz al-islam wa al-muslimin wa adil al-shirk wa al-mushrikin wa dammil a'da'ana a'da'a al-deen wa ahmi hawzat al-islam ya Rabb al-alamin Allahumma inna la'udu bi ridaka min sakhatik wa bi mu'afatika min uqubatik wa bika mink la nuhsithna an alika wa law harasna anta kama athnayta ala nafsik wa صل اللهم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وآخر دعوانا عن الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة